happen. That's why you can't destroy the morale and the confidence of Stephon Anthony after his rookie year like you've done. And you destroyed the confidence of Andrew T. This is the Saints personnel and coaching staff that has destroyed these young players and impatience. Because it's not working now when you're throwing away all this money on all of these high priced veterans and unsigned, you know, draft picks, you know, that you bring it in these free agents and you give up on your young players. That's why I say I don't care how rough Greg, you know, I mean, uh, Will Lux kicked. You got to stick with him. You gave up too quickly on Gary Hartley. You had one bad year. You gave up on Gary Hartley. That's, you cannot do that. This boy may not kick that well this year. He struggled a little bit in this game with his kicking, but you got to stick with him. He'll, he'll get better. Yeah. So impatience is costing the Saints also because you just steady spending head, spending money, spending around, trying to find someone that can fit in for that. You know, there's no – the days, with the exception of Julio Jones and a few of the quarterbacks, there ain't no household superstars like me, you and Remy Kane growing up in the 70s and 80s, the Tony Dorsett, Walter Payton, Franco Harris, Terry Brass. Them days are over. And if, the, if, if people watching football are looking for those type of players, that's not, that is not what's coming out of college. Because mm-hmm. even Julio and Odell Beckham every week don't tear up the league and tear up games the way Jerry Rice and them used to do and Tim Brown and them. That's, that's not the college kids coming into the NFL anymore. It's mm-hmm. a different breed. So you're going to have to grow superstars now. Look at Malcolm Jenkins, an all-pro now. Two years, three years in a row, all-pro, out of this world. Yeah. He was right there in New Orleans. Yeah, he had another turnover that he – I think he ran it back for a touchdown. They had they, – they said he was down, but, man, I mean, Malcolm Jenkins, every, every game he's being okay. the game changer that I used to call Thank him. You, he is a game changer. You're right. All right, guys, let's move on. Let's kind of wrap up the show. Um, Drew Brees right now, he's at a <laughs> all-pro level through six games, 2,100 yards passing, 17 touchdowns, five interceptions. Um, I mean, it's just outstanding job. And on the flip side with the Seahawks, let's look at these guys. Russell Wilson, he's having an off year because he's a little injured, and it came out today that he not only is suffering with a knee injury, he now has a pectoral injury. We don't know how severe that is for Russell Wilson at this time, but also we got to say congratulations to he and yeah. Sierra. Please, man, I, I don't feel sorry. That's exactly what I was about to say. I don't feel sorry for him, man. He got <laughs> he, he he was Sierra and they got a baby coming. Come on. All right, Professor said he is not sorry that he's hurt. Yeah, you're right. Let let her go rub it, huh? Rub rub in some Bengay, right? Right. I'm like I'm like I ain't feeling sorry for you, Russell. No, I I was saying congratulations because they just announced oh, yeah, today the baby, yeah, yeah, the yeah, baby yeah, yeah. is on. Yeah, TV. you know, yeah. Congratulations on your baby. Congratulations on your woman. But you know, put so on it, but I don't want to hear. <laughs> 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 All right. There's only one. There's only one Remy Jones who that name. That's why we love our brother. <laughs> All right, shout man. out to the Gators of Gregory. <laughs> All right, Jimmy Graham is coming home, y'all. Coming back to the Boy. dome, y'all. What do you think is oh, going to happen on Sunday, y'all? Oh, oh, oh. All I can say is, oh boy, I have, I have, I have seen over the years returning Saints players, and we've been like, yeah. and why, and why did we get rid of him? <laughs> <laughs> and the Saints linebackers, and and the only hope we got is Kenny Vaccaro. Can you know? You got to understand that Jimmy knows the Saints offense. That's going to be a huge problem for the Saints offense. Because Coach Payton and Pete Carmichael have not changed that offense much. 
and Jimmy has given Seattle all the details and nitty gritty. Um, and CJ Spiller. Well, and CJ Spiller. was just cut. Do you think CJ they just cut him? Doing the same thing though. Yeah, I know. And Max Unger knows their defense, so that yeah, so that should be interesting. If yeah. he played against it, that's, that's a good point, Rem. Yeah, I was surprised today they cut CJ Spillers. Uh, he was a healthy scratch for the game out in um, Arizona where they were tied with those guys 6-6. Six, six. And uh, it came out today that they decided to release C.J. Spillers from the Seahawks, so we would not be seeing him on Sunday in the dump. I don't know what happened. To, I don't know what happened to C.J. once he left Buffalo, but I remember the broadcaster from Buffalo saying about C.J. and Jarris Bird that they were both declining players in terms of why Buffalo decided to let them go. And sadly, it's, it appears that that gentleman from the um, radio station in Buffalo was absolutely correct. Um, I hope CJ, as well as Keenan Lewis, can latch on to another team. I just don't understand it. I know I'm 50 years of age, the three of us. I don't know what's going on with the NFL players now that in your 20s now your career is over. I, I I mean, I just, this is the most baffling thing I have ever seen that now the NFL career life, if you're lucky, five years is about all you're going to get in the NFL. Hmm. So I wish, I wish he did well, man. Yeah. How long do you, how long do you have to play to get a pension? Mm, I think they get a pension if they're in the league at least one or two, two years, three years? Three years. I, I believe guess. it's three years. If I'm yeah, three years. Uh, I did check on that with the CBA, yeah. but I think it's three years at least. Man, look, uh, my cousin played in the NFL sporadically for over a year, and he's eligible for a certain, certain, um, certain, not pensions, but benefits to be able to mm-hmm. give to those guys. So, but anyway, uh, let's kind of move on, guys. Uh, it's going to be a tough. Game. Uh, I was listening to Deuce on WWL. He was talking about the game. He brought up some good points that this Seattle defense is not without its problems as well. Uh, there's some possibilities. You can see how Julio Jones had some uh, success against those guys. We don't have a Julio Jones, but we do have Brandon Cooks and we do have Willie Sneed. If those guys could be able to find some opportunities in those zone openings, I think the Saints can be able to be uh, effective moving the ball down the field against the Seattle Seahawks. The problem always is going to be how our our offensive line will handle the pressure of their defensive line. So here are some uh, intangible battles, and I want to get your feel professional as well as professor. Let's start with the first one, uh, professional. The Saints O-line versus the Hawks D-line. Who has the advantage? I had to get to the Hawks D-line. Well, that's what we're talking one game. I had to give it to the Hawks D-line. I would give I, but I would give the edge to the Saints on in the past game, which will probably be where they put the most emphasis. So now I'm going to switch my answer. I'm going to give it to the Saints. <laughs> okay. Uh, professor, the Saints D-line versus the Hawks O-line. Both of them are bad. Um, good boy, that's a tie. Because <laughs> they're both bad. The only hope we have on right now is Nick Fairley. Um, he's the only one getting a pass rush. Hopefully Cam Jordan can improve in this game. So I will give a slight edge, very slight, to the Saints defensive line. Okay. All right. And professional, we got the Saints offensive weapons versus the Hawks defensive stars. Who has the edge? I would say we're talking about, we're talking offense passing game again. Mm-hmm. I think I think we have more weapons than they do. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to give a slight edge, very slight edge to the offense. Okay. Offense. All right. Good. Good. And yeah, little Star Wars for you guys. All right, uh, Russell I Wilson. Music. <laughs> yeah, it's some horror mu- music, man. And isn't that something? Halloween is right there, isn't it? 
the Monday. next the next day. Mm. Wow. Okay. Uh, Russell Wilson versus Drew Brees. Professor, who has the edge right now? Well, it's not really. Um, I think the problem with the Saints is going to be Kobe Fleener. Saints are not going to win this game if Kobe Fleener is just catching one or two receptions. Okay. No, you need to stay on target. Now, who has <laughs> Russell Wilson versus Drew that's Brees? What, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, don't think this, I do not think that Drew Brees is going to have the edge because that secondary Seattle is going to get in the head of Brandon Cooks. Michael Thomas and Willie Sneed, they're young. Those guys are veterans. And that's why I can't I'm going to go with Russell Wilson because you got Kobe Fleener is the X Factor and, and he was the X Factor in the game that they need Kobe Fleener and Josh Hill to play better. We don't have the Saints are missing their tight ends in these games. That's why these drives are ending. And Drew Brees is gonna have an episode period where they're gonna have three or four drives that are not gonna do anything. The Saints are missing their tight ends in their offense. And that's why the drives are stalling. And I think Bobby Wagner, Cam Chancellor, and them are going to get to Drew in that pass rush. So I give the edge to Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, okay. Well, Let me ask you, well, I'm, I'm, I'm Professor. Gonna say, I'm going to say that's a push as well because um, just like just like Russell Wilson has um, Sierra, man, you seen Drew Brees like <laughs> Hey, I'm about to go into that. You, you're giving me a good segue. I was about to go into that, but go ahead. <laughs> That's a push, man. That's a push. That's right. So that that was the next thing, Sierra or Brittany? <laughs> Who has the intangibles there? <laughs> you know what? I love I love Sierra, but man. Brand is a baby making machine. I got to give it to her. Yeah, she she pushed out four, <laughs> man. She pushed she out four. Out. <laughs> Sierra just <laughs> going on one and a half right now. So yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah, yeah. We'll so we give that to her. Uh, Jimmy versus Vaccaro, man. Who has the advantage there, guys? Ooh. See, last year they were both injured, I believe, weren't they? Mm-hmm. And this season, they're both healthy. And I think this is the first season with um, Seattle that that Jimmy's had something happening for him. And this seems to be a very, you know, big breakout year for Vaccaro, too. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to even pick on that one, man. That could be – that can go either way. Hmm. Okay. Professor? I agree with Remy. That can go either way, but I just remember Jimmy Graham burning the Saints when he played for the Saints in training, training camp and, and preseason against these same players. <clears throat> I don't think Seattle plays that type of offense. That's why you'll probably see Jimmy in a, won't be as explosive. But knowing Pete Carroll, he'll look for an advantage. And I think that battle – because Jimmy knows Kenny Vaccaro, Kenny knows Jimmy, and based most of the time, Jimmy was winning those battles in the training camp. So I'm going to give the edge to Jimmy Graham if Seattle plays him smartly. Yeah. I think Jimmy wants to come in, and he's going to be highly emotional this game. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think he wants to come in and prove something to Sean Payton. That's, that's his whole MO right there. And it's nothing against anybody else. I think his anger will be inflicted <laughs> partly because of what Sean Payton did in trading him. So, can, I, can, can we kind of segue that to something else real quick, Kyle? Yeah, go ahead. I was just wondering. Thanks, trade. Do you remember coming back into the dome and just ripping us the most? That's a question I have for both of you guys. Hmm. Let me think. Oof. I know Wes Chandler did when he came yeah. back with the Chargers. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, um, Chuck Muncy came back. Chuck Muncy. Uh, George, Who else? George, George Rogers when he went to Washington and left the Saints. Mm. Um, as of more recently, um, the Saints have not really traded anybody, you know, off of the Sean Payton era. And Jim Haslett, 
they didn't really trade nobody either there. Mostly it was the 80s and 90s.